Welcome boys and girls and parents to another ranger session, we might call it, and this one we call Water, Water Everywhere. And that's because right here at Cromwell Valley Park, we have many streams and seeps and springs and ponds that are worth discovering this summer. So first off, um, you're going to need a couple of basic things. And number one, if you go to Dollar General, this is kind of a flimsy little net, but it can still work. And we'll use this a little bit later. This is a little bit more expensive. It's not a dollar. It's a couple of bucks. This is a, um, a, an aquarium net, and that can be pretty good. But what we're also going to uh, encourage you to do, especially when you download our PDFs at the end of the program, um, we're going to have nets, some of our Nature Center nets set up for you. Now these, now that's what we're talking about there. These are really great nets for catching things. So we're gonna, you're gonna need a couple of basic things and that's always a, um, a fun thing. Something to put animals in. Yes, this is an ice cube tray, but it works great because you can put water in here and any of the little creepy crawlies that you catch can go inside. If you want a spring for a capture container, probably from Dollar General, that's worth having because you can put animals in you can see. So I recommend that. If you're feeling scientific, you can go to the website of the Department of Natural Resources of Maryland and you can get the stream macroinvertebrates, just means animals without backbones. And these are a lot of the kind of things you may find in a stream. If you want to be scientific as well, it's really neat to have a thermometer. You find out how cold is that water because that affects a lot of animals. The warmer the water is, the less oxygen it holds. The slower the water's moving, the less oxygen it holds. But conversely, if the water's cold and moving fast, it can hold a lot of oxygen, and that, that's good for the animals that live there. So, I think we need to get started. Along Mine Bank Run, in the clear and seemingly empty pools, once you get below the surface, you see where the fish, called dace, are small minnows that use the larger rocks that create eddies so that they can conserve energy as they look for food. Among the other natural features within Cromwell Valley are the artesian wells. That's one of the reasons that at the bridge the water is so cold. We took a measurement of it. It was 55 degrees. Look how the sand is blasting up from the water pressure underneath. So it's basically a spring under pressure. It's like a garden hose. Look at that gravel. Man, that's something. Here in this pool of water, you can see a water strider. He's a really interesting insect because he basically is standing on the surface of the water, the surface tension. And if you look closely, you can see his shadows where his weight is pushing down on the surface of the water. He's a really interesting bug. The lower reaches of Mine Bank Run, where the water velocity slows, creates underwater sandbars and gravel beds next to large rocks and boulders where the fish can congregate. Here, dace, creek chubs, and white suckers find safety in their numbers while they search for food. The sucker roots through the sand particles sifting for bits of detritus while the dace dart out to capture insects in the current. They then all regroup again near the boulders and the whole process starts over again. So along with the riffles and the pools that were created in the stream, here's a pool behind me, I want to point out something. Mine Bank Run is not the uh, healthiest stream and the, the water here is, is really clear. It looks beautiful for sure, but this place floods whenever there's a thunderstorm. It's because its upper reaches in Towson, the water just shoots off, goes into the sewers, which end up shooting the water into Mine Bank, way upstream, miles from where we are. So this stream can get, could rise over my head in like 20 minutes during a heavy storm. And that's no kidding. And you can tell right over here, that's why I came over, 
Look at these. See the trees? Look how they're bent over like that. They're not bent over from wind. That's water pressure. All these roots are exposed. A stream that's really healthy and has a healthy watershed, it, you won't see things like this. You're going to see the bank is intact. There'd be mosses and ferns growing right down to the water's edge. When you look at mine bank, at first glance, it looks great. It's, it's clear and rocky, but that's because that's the only thing that can make it in here. The rocks get shuffled and they roar down the stream. It's like a giant scouring brush that cleans everything. And the stream needs to have energy in it. It has to have ecology. It has to have plants and animals working together. It's not that there aren't some animals in mine bank. There are. But we're going to go visit a woodland stream and I'll show you some of the differences there. Okay. Look at the difference where we were and where we are. Um, this forest around me helps keep the stream cool and protect it. But there's also kinds of plants that grow in these riparian or streamside habitats like spice bush right here. That's a very common uh, plant that grows along the, the perimeter. And also this large leaf plant here, look at that, it comes with its own drip tips. It's actually a tropical plant that's uh, moved into areas like Maryland over the thousands of years. It's called pawpaw. As a matter of fact, we just spot it. What's a pawpaw, you may say? Well, a pawpaw is, I mean, is this banana-like fruit right here. It's going to taste like a custard and mm, pear mixed together. It's really yummy. It's not going to be ready until September, so it's got a couple months to go, but that's pretty doggone neat. And they, the pawpaw likes to grow in habitats like this, cool and shady. Absolutely. All right, we're going to head to the stream. So this is one of the many little streams that bisect the park. And we found all kinds of things here. Look at this. You look right here, you'll see where a fawn has been walking. And then a full-size deer is their prints here and here in the sand. So a lot of animals. Oh, here's a really good track. Look, right there is that typical, like a heart shape. See that? So I'll bet your mom and baby came down to get a drink and holy smoke, look at this. Somebody came here to get out of the 90 degree heat. And anybody know what that guy is? That is a turtle. And he burrowed in. And not only is he a turtle, he's a box turtle. Look at that. He's closed in with all that dirt in there. Oh, there he is. You can just barely see his... I don't know if you can get a look at it. And, oh, I know it's a... How do you know if it's a boy or a girl? Well, sometimes it, sometimes the boys are more colorful. But this is pretty doggone colorful. Well, the way you can look is, you look at the bottom. This is called the carapace. This is the plastron. And if the plastron is pretty flat, it's a girl. And if we could just get her to peek out, she's being shy, we would see she has more than likely brown eyes. So this is a girl. And she could be, looking at the rings on the shell, I can see just by a guesstimation, she's over 10 years old. Not very big. A turtle like this can live to be over 120 years for box turtles. Not all turtles live that long. But she was right there just getting nice and cool. And I don't blame her because I'm sweating right now. Let's go to the stream and see how we capture some of these other animals. All right. So now we're in place on this unnamed tributary, this small stream. And when you're using a net, it's really easy to catch some of the critters that live in and around the stream. They don't want to be caught. They don't want to be seen. So they're going to be in the... Um, under rocks, they're going to be in the sticks, they're going to be on the edge where the plants come together. So I'm going to show you what you do. You just take your net, one easy thing to do, put your net down there in the water like this, and then I'll go upstream here, and I'm going to like kick the rocks, and you can move them by hand too, like this. And what happens is the current is going to drag and carry stuff into the net. You can even help it, but your net has to be right on the bottom. There we go. I'll pick it up. I'm like, Holy smokes! You won't believe what we got! Let's go over to the capture containers and take a look at them up close. So, I brought my uh, stream macro invertebrate thing, but I, I know what we have here. Let's take a look. 
we dump them in here and we put some in our ice cube container. And here's why. This guy right here, he's got three little tails. Can you see his gills uh, flapping? See if you can get close enough to see that. See those gills? He's, that's how he gets his oxygen. He has three tails. And if you look in here, you'll see this guy only has two tails. And he's a stonefly. So stonefly, mayfly. And when you catch them in a stream, that tells you you've got something really good. That means the water has the three C's, as I call it. Ranger Kirk says three C's are clean, clear, and cold water, or at least cool. And we put a thermometer in, and our water is about mm, 70 degrees. So that's cool. It's not as cold as the spring, but that makes sense. And look at these other animals. So these are our little scavengers in the stream environment. They're crayfish. I'll pull one up so we can get a look at him. And if you're a little kid, ooh, he's a little, well, you can see how he moves, you know, his back tail, he's like a little freshwater lobster. There you go. And if you're a little kid, don't kid yourself. See those claws? <laughs> he's a, what we call a decapod. That means he has 10 legs. That includes those little claws you see waving. One time Ranger Kirk said, I wonder how that would hurt if I stuck my finger right there. Well, guess what? It does, and he uses those things to hold on to things and to crush things. Like he would like to eat the mayfly and the stonefly probably, but we're not gonna put him in there. And if you look here, I'll pull it up on my hand. So here's a crayfish. He lives in the, under the rocks and in burrows they make in the side of the stream. I'll put him back in, but look at that. That's a little rock tent. And inside of that is an insect. I can just see his head. I, I doubt you'll be able to see it, but he's called a caddis fly. And they attach their cases. And look at this. There's several more. One, two, three, four. Look at this guy. He's stuck up in the air. Six plus the one I was holding. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight of them on there. And that, believe it or not, if you're a trout, which is a fish, they will gobble. I've seen it look like uh, sand in their stomachs before. And they eat the, they grab the whole thing. These guys spin nets in the water, and when things get washed down that they might like to eat, like detritus, which is basically broken down plant and animal matter, they munch it right off of the web that they spun. And they turn into a flying insect later on. So we're gonna put these rocks. If you take rocks out of the stream, put them back, because that's the habitat for all these animals when you're out here exploring. So I'm gonna pour them in there, and we're gonna let them go, and then we're gonna go to a place where it's not moving water, it's gonna be pretty hot, and it's a place a frog might like to live. All right, boys and girls, boy, what a change in scenery. Remember how dark and shady it was where we were, where the small stream was? Now we're in out in the open. And at Cromwell Valley Park, you're gonna find that we have several of these small garden ponds that we've built. And that's a-okay, you know, adding a water feature to your own home, which I did when I was a kid, man, you'd be amazed at the amount of wildlife that are attracted to it. So you're welcome to come over if you have one of our nets and um, you'll see some different plants here that like to live in the water. This is lizard tail, it's a funny name for it, but once this thing flowers, it has a tail that kind of flops over like a gecko. That's pretty neat. Here's a fragrant water lily, not quite open. It must be a new flower coming up. This is wing stem over here. And we actually planted some pawpaw trees here to provide shade in the future. And I, I did a little experiment over here, and that is to see what the water temperature was compared to the, the stream. Wow, it's 80, uh, 88 degrees right on the surface. And, but if you reach down below, the a layer of submerged aquatic vegetation, it gets cool down there. And I had the thermometer down there. So we'll look at that in a minute. So what happens is these plants absorb a lot of the sun and they're giving off oxygen. As a matter of fact, if you look real carefully in the sunlight and just watch the, the plants, you actually see tiny bubbles of oxygen coming off the leaves of the Elodea that's in here. And that's something. And that's providing shade for anything underneath. 
and that's what these leaves do too. They're waxy and green and beautiful of the fragrant water lily, but underneath it's cool because they're, you know, it's like the shade of a tree. Well, this is the shade of a, um, a floating water lily. So let's see what's inside the pond itself. I'll take a dip. It doesn't take much. That's all you need to do. Reach in and see if you, you catch anything and I'll be doggone. Look at that. I caught, and I'm gonna put him over in this container, and a little earlier we caught, look at the tadpoles. And they go through life stages. One of your PDFs that you can download will help guide you from egg, to polywog, to froglet, to frog. And that's the stages they go through. Look at this one guy. He's already got some legs going. That His spotted tail, I think that's a great tree frog tadpole. But they're, they're harder to tell apart than you might think. So when you're visiting the pond, it's okay to dip some stuff out, but then put it back in if you scooped anything out. Just like we're gonna let, let our uh, tadpole friends loose here. I'll try one more dip in the pond and see what we get. And kind of shovel, like a shovel, it doesn't work as well as sticking it in like this and dragging it to you, just like that. Let's see what we did. Ready? May not look like you got anything, but if you look, a little more carefully, look at that. That's more tadpoles. It's okay to catch them, but you can't keep them out of the water for long. Because as tadpoles, they're breathing oxygen in the water. They don't breathe air yet. That is pretty doggone neat, I think. That's really cool. Let's find out what our temperature is. It got cloudy all of a sudden, huh? But I'll take that. Ah! It's 80 at the bottom, and it was 88 at the top. So that makes pretty good sense as these plants really shield um, the bottom from the direct sun. So a lot of animals can hide in here, and a lot of animals can be cooler when they're down on the very bottom. So ponds are pretty neat places to visit. We've got one more place we've got to go for a boat race. If there's magic in this world is contained in water. And surely today we had some fun because we took a look at different habitats. We looked at ponds. We looked at two different kinds of streams. We've been under the water. We've been over the water. So all you need to do is take mom and dad's hand and come to Cromwell Valley Park and begin your own adventure from what you've seen here today. So I'm going to make a boat. How do you make a boat? Well, you take your a tulip tree leaf. I'm going to cut off the petiole right here, and then I'm going to fold it up like this. So I take the two leaves, you know, fold it like that, then I take the petiole and I spear one side of it, and then I make it pop out the other side, and it should hold the leaves together. Hey, look at that sporty boat. Let's see if it travels. This is just sink. I don't know. Whoa, there it goes. Aye, aye, Captain. That looks like a load of fun to me, kids. Look at it go. Woo. Let's try the other boat. Built by Ranger Laura. Has a sail on a piece of wood. That's pretty doggone neat, I think. There we go. Captain Ahab. There we go. Hey, it did float. Wow! Bon voyage! So, remember, come out here to Cromwell Valley, bring your mom and your dad, and you can have a load of fun. Until next time. Thank you.